I've talked about this a few times in different discussion videos over the past few weeks, and I, I really just want to take a couple minutes and really focus in on it so that we can actually have a discussion about this and have a response video about this in a couple of days. Because this topic is something that I really want. I don't have a lot of hopes that we'll get it, but if we did get it, I want to talk about how it'll affect Fire Emblem Three Houses and how it'll affect how the game is perceived. So, and this thing that, that I'm alluding to, and you'll, you'll see the thumbnail in the title, is a second generation in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now, I don't particularly want a second generation that is similar to Awakening or Fates, where there was either some timey wimey mumbo jumbo that happened, or they were put in, the children were put into some alternate universe where time moved quicker or something stupid like that. Uh, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I don't want that personally, but there is a possibility that we'll get that. The child mechanic is a, a huge part of Fire Emblem Awakening and Fates' appeal, especially to a more casual audience. If you look at reviews, like I'm just, I'm not going to show any or look at, like really look into it that hard, but just speaking from prior knowledge, um, if you look into reviews of Awakening and Fates and then look at like Fire Emblem Echoes, there are so many people that are like, oh, we love the child system. Oh, we love building children. And then you get to Echoes and they're like, what? Only three, only a support, no marriage. I can't have children in this game. I think it's something that's really important to a lot of people. Um, that that especially critics, in, uh, the in the video game industry. So I mean, I don't have a whole lot of respect for a lot of opinions, <laughs> on uh, on honestly on just video games in general from places like IGN and other big companies because I don't know. It's just. I, especially IGN, they're infamous now for their their lack of Fire Emblem knowledge, right? I mean, they've had just terrible guide videos. There was the whole Fire Emblem Three Heroes for the 3DS or whatever they said <laughs> on their Nintendo podcast. It was just ridiculous, you know. They obviously don't put in the time and effort to uh, understand a series and understand a franchise unless it's something they already just, like, know and, and enjoy, like Zelda or something. Like, I find their Zelda and Mario topics and whatever they talk about with, like, the really major Nintendo franchises to be pretty good. But anytime they veer off into more niche or obscure, like, Fire Emblem isn't even obscure anymore, but more obscure series than those, their, their opinions start to be less meaningful and they start to be more general and I stop caring what they have to say. Uh, but the sad thing is, those people, those reviews... From people like the critics at IGN are the ones that are so important to the sales of a game uh, you know us the core fans people who watch this channel and then people on like forums on Serenus Forest the reddit all sorts of stuff we're all gonna buy three houses regardless of review scores I feel there aren't very many fans of Fire Emblem that are waiting for review scores for three houses to come out I bet a lot of people just have it pre-ordered or the special edition pre-ordered already and that's that's great I love that and I think that's I, I love that personally because I don't want critics to affect how I view a game I want my own opinion on it and I love Fire Emblem so I'm sure I'll be fine with it whether or not it's the best or the worst game in the series it'll probably still be fun you know but these critics at these big companies who don't really understand Fire Emblem or don't aren't really fans of the series or the genre itself they look to those more casual things like the marriage system or short, the dating simulator, gross, <laughs> to say it that way, um, and the kid system as this thing that they can like see, relate to, and enjoy, um, and then the strategy is just kind of built around that or whatever, and the story is like important to them too and whatever else, and not to say that those elements can't be enjoyed and they aren't good, you know, you need, if, if, if the children, are if children are implemented well, it can be great, but all I'm saying again, what I'm trying to say is that I think intelligence systems in Nintendo might be a little more uh, worried about the general populace and what they think rather than us, the fans. It, totally, this is totally speculation, but that's simply because of the way that like echoes didn't sell terribly great i understand it was a remake but it was a remake of a game that was made like a bazillion years ago and it was honestly basically just a brand new game and it didn't sell as well of course as fates and awakening which are 
you know, they sold incredibly well, uh, incredibly successful critically as well, which is funny because I think a lot of, you know, a lot of like serious fans of the franchise will look at Fates as a, as a poorly made game or a poorly written game or, or any, uh, any of that. But, you know, you go look at IGN or, or the Medic, Metacritic and whatever else, Fates is like nine point whatever, you know, and, and I think most people in the community would say, nah, it's, it's not the best game in the series, but it's not like horrendously bad. Um, even though there'll be the few naysayers that will say it's horrendously bad because they just like to be extreme. People like to be extreme. It's for no reason. Uh, anyways, so all this going back to children characters in three houses. I think they're going to be there regardless of how it's implemented. They will be there. Um, but I think there is the chance that we will get a second generation like Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. And for those who, who don't know, Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War has um, the first half of the game, which stars Sigurd and his compatriots and pals and people they meet. And the player has the opportunity to essentially build supports, like in Awakening of Fates. It's, it's, pre, it's actually pretty different from that. Uh, but you can think of it that way, by waiting, by having units wait next to each other, and they eventually fall in love and get married and have children. Which, then in the second generation, which after the first half of the game, there is a major time skip. I can't remember exactly, like, we, we know how long it is because of the you draw calendar. Uh, but it's like, I want to say it's like 15 or 16 years or something like that. And... Then it stars, and the second half it stars, you know, Sigurd's son, and then all of the children of the characters from the first generation, and also some other side characters that are important to the plot as well. And most of those first gen characters don't appear in the second generation at all. There's only a couple that make an appearance, and I, I love that. I think it's really cool, and it's a way to really separate the kids from the parents, give them their own story, their own identity. But when we look at Fates and Awakening, we have these kids that fight alongside their parents and i don't know it just makes them so much less important so much less impactful to me and that i just really don't care about their existence you know characters like siegbert characters like shiro okay they, they could have been cool awesome well-developed characters if they were given their own like second generation to go off of but instead we have some haphazardly written support conversations with their parents and with other child child units that you know, are supposed to give us their story and tell us about them and that otherwise they're just kind of there to fill a, a, a you know spot in the roster and they don't feel important like at all <laughs> awakening does it a little better than fates you know with the time travel and it just makes a little like time travel never makes sense but it makes a little more sense i guess uh but there is no doubt again closing statements <laughs> this has been kind of all over the place. I didn't write any notes. I just want to just get this out here. Uh, closing notes, closing thoughts. Three houses. I will say now, I'll, I'll, I will say right now, there is going to be a second generation of some kind. Whether or not it's an awakening in fate style, awakening style, fate style, or in FE4, you know, FE genealogy of the Holy War style of second generation. Um, but I personally want a second generation similar to uh, genealogy of the holy war and i think most people would agree with me on that most fans of the series would say that's what they want as well that that's what would resonate with them and want make them excited for the game overall and i think intelligent systems knows that at the very least they, like they got to pay attention to the fan base a little bit right like i know i said that they don't but they, they must at some point know so maybe they'll make everybody happy by giving us you know you build these child units but also you get to move on to the second generation and they could even do the whole thing like there was supposed to be a third part you know the uh, genealogy of the holy war where the kids fought alongside the parents somehow i don't know how they were going to pull that off uh especially the story would have been majorly different <laughs> uh but i i can see them doing something like that for three houses as well and just the major focus on time in three houses really makes me hope that that is the case you know there's the calendar and the weekends and every chapter's a month and i could see like the first like story the first half of the story the first generation taking place over a year years worth of game you know a year's worth of of uh of chapters and and weeks and events and stuff and then we can move on to like a, a time skip and we're in another 
you know, another 12 months of game or, or something like that. And you can even have Byleth be a part of that second generation still as, uh, as a mentor, as a teacher still. There's so many things they could do with it. And I hope that's what they do. And it could be a way to please, you know, new fans or, you know, the general populace giving them the supports and the child characters that they like to have, but also help us as new fans feel like IS cares about us <laughs> and that they want us to enjoy the game and they want uh, Three Houses to be an enjoyable experience for veterans of the series and new fans alike. All right, thanks for listening, guys. This was kind of a long, drawn-out rant. I... I didn't plan this like at all. I just said I'm going to start the mic and just start talking about this because I have a lot to say about it. I have a lot of thoughts about it. So here it was. There you go. Thank you again for listening. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem discussion as always. But more importantly, I don't want to say more importantly, just as important, <laughs> leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this topic. How do you think a second generation will be handled? How do you want it to be handled? And do you think Intelligent Systems is more worried about the general fan base? Or do you think they are more worried about uh, pleasing the general public and impressing them with their games? And obviously they want to bring in new fans and whatever else. But I'm interested to see your guys' take on this. And we'll talk about it later this week as well. Uh, so thank you for listening, friends. And I'll catch you guys next time.